patients who are going through treatment, and it's really a great opportunity to like help people and motivate people and like you know really lift up their spirits. And so we'll be making like like uh, like 500 cards that we'll um, all send to the organization, and then they'll send them to the cancer patients, and it will be a lot of fun. And we actually have the um, the founder of the organization, Kim Whitehouse, here today. So we'd love to come up. Thank you very much, Jackie. I appreciate it. You guys, Jackie, Jackie has worked really hard over the past couple of months to prepare for today. So I would like for all of us to give her a big round of applause. So I would like to see, from a show of hands, how many of you know somebody that has or has has cancer now or has had cancer before wow that's that's a lot of you that that doesn't surprise me if i were to ask you the same question an hour from now every single one of you would be able to raise your hand because i had cancer i had cancer three years ago in on april 19th of 2011 i was diagnosed with breast cancer and i was 38 years old I was completely shocked. There's no family history of any type of cancer in my family at all. The first few days after I found out, it was absolutely devastating. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would be so worried about my future. I wanna know, is there going to be a future? I felt very helpless and I felt very afraid. And in my quiet moments, I would cry. I would ask myself, why me? I've got young kids. Life was very much worth fighting for. One of my kids is actually with me today. This is my daughter, Ansley. She's nine. As I gained more knowledge about the cancer, I became, I got more peace from that because as I gained more knowledge, I found, I found myself reading more about the cancer and I actually became very obsessed. In one second, I would feel really strong and really powerful. And then the next second, I felt so weak and I felt so scared. It was my family and my friends that helped me through. They named themselves Kim's Crew. They were absolutely amazing. The purple flower that's on the, my logo here was actually the Kim's Crew thing. We all had purple flowers to wear, we had purple earrings to wear because they asked me what my favorite color was and my favorite color is purple. So I went through nine months of cancer treatments. I had several surgeries, I had radiation, I had chemotherapy. It was really, really rough. But I was the lucky one because I had found my cancer early, so it was very highly treatable. Those nine months, they were the hardest days of my life. But out of the hardest days came some of the most amazing and blessed things. And I'm going to tell you about some of those today. I'm gonna tell you about three things that greatly impacted me during my journey with cancer. The first thing is this. This is a pinwheel. And a second ago in the wind, it was going super fast. <laughs> to me, this was more than just a pinwheel. This was my inspiration. So after I was diagnosed with cancer, I went and I visited with my friend and my neighbor. Her name is Joy. And I was leaving her house and I noticed out front she had all these beautiful pinwheels in her front yard and they were all spinning and I loved them and I pointed it out to her how much I loved them and she said, take it, take that, take that home with you. So I brought it home and I put it in my front yard. And every single day I would walk by my window and I would look outside and I would see the pinwheel and it would make me feel so happy. And there it was, it'd be a totally calm day with no wind in the air whatsoever and my pinwheel was just spinning so fast. It just kept going and going and going. It never, ever gave up. Sometimes it would spin really slow, but other times it was going so fast I couldn't even see the colors on it. So I followed what my pinwheel did. I decided that I am not gonna give up and I'm gonna keep on going and going and going no matter what. So I had this pinwheel, it was in my ground, the whole time that I was going through the treatments, the whole nine months. 
This pinwheel, it, it endured rainstorms and thunderstorms and hailstorms and snowstorms and windstorms. It was unbelievable. On my last day of treatment, it was December 9th, 2011, and I pulled the pinwheel out of the ground because I was feeling, yes, I've done this. I've accomplished this. I have made it through the storm. And my pinwheel didn't even have a scratch on it. It looked brand new. It was amazing. So we're gonna fast forward from there. A couple months later, I'm feeling healthy. I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling really good. So my local church that I attend, I started a cancer care ministry with, along with the parish nurse that's there. And what part of our mission with our ministry was to send cards to our parishioners that are going through cancer. And so I was in charge of sending them cards. It was about a month after we started our ministry, I was having just a really, really hard, hard morning. It was one of those mornings where you, I woke up and I'm like, I was just feeling really down and really just bad. And I was questioning, is my cancer gonna come back? Am I gonna get a new cancer? And I, and I was feeling just gross because I was bald because I'd lost every single hair on my head. So I decided I'm gonna go do yoga because yoga makes me feel so center, so balanced, focused. So I dropped my daughter off at school and I'm cutting through the community to go to yoga class. And I'm driving along on this morning that I'm not feeling really well and I look over and there's a house on the right side of the street and it has the same pinwheel in her front yard. And it was once again, it was a very calm day. There literally was no breeze in the air whatsoever. And this person's pinwheel was going 100 miles an hour. So when I saw that, I felt great peace. I felt like everything was gonna be okay. I felt like that pinwheel was there for me to see that day. But little did I know, I found out afterwards that that house that the pinwheel was at, that was the house of the parish nurse, the one that had started the ministry with me. She had no idea of my pinwheel story, and I had no idea that that was her house. It was just amazing. And what's ironic is she told me, I told her when I had driven by and seen it, and she told me literally the very next day, her pinwheel completely fell apart. It just broke out of nowhere. So it stuck together enough for me to know that everything was gonna be okay, and then it broke, it did its job. So personally, I believe in, I believe in the power of belief, I believe in the power of faith, and I believe that things happen to all of us for a reason. A simple gift of a $1 dollar store pinwheel provided such great hope and inspiration to me. So please never underestimate the power of giving to help other people. The second thing that impacted me while going through cancer, and it doesn't cost a thing, is the gift of a rainbow. I absolutely love rainbows. Who doesn't, right? They are beautiful. Personally, I wish I could see them every single day. Usually in a year, I might see one rainbow if I'm happy. So the year that I went in 2011, when I went through the treatment, I saw three rainbows. And what's very special about this is that the three rainbows that I saw were on these days. The first rainbow I saw was the day before I went in to have my cancer removed with my surgery. The second day I saw a rainbow was the day before I had my very first chemotherapy treatment. And the third day that I saw the rainbow was the day before I had to find out whether or not I needed to have a blood transfusion, which I did not need, but I didn't know that at the time. Once again, the rainbows, they were meant for me to see that day. They were to tell me that everything would be okay to keep going through the storm and that in the end I would find my rainbow. And we are all faced with difficulties in our lives. We can either let these difficulties destroy us, or we can decide that we need to move forward and we need to focus our energy. And we need to focus away from ourselves. We need to focus on other people. How can we make this world a better place? How can we help other people who need our help? This is really how Send a Smile Today was born. 
It was hurtful to me to find out, it was a regular basis, of, I'd always find out somebody else that was getting cancer. People I knew, people I didn't know. And these people who were being diagnosed, they were scared, they were frightened for their future, and they just plain want to be normal, just like I had been. So I have had a strong desire and a passion to help these people. The very last thing that had impacted me the most when I was going through the cancer treatments was receiving a card in the mail. I would receive cards from friends, family, people I hadn't heard from a very long time, and even strangers would send me cards. The cards got me through the awful days. I specifically remember one day I was feeling awful when I was going through the chemotherapy. My body ached, I felt nauseous, I was exhausted. I couldn't get out and do the things that I usually do and that I like to enjoy doing because I felt so bad. And on top of that, I just honestly just felt ugly because I had no hair. And to put on my wig or to put on a hat, it was just, it was the middle of summer, too hot, didn't want to go there. So I walked to my mailbox that one day that I was feeling awful. And inside that mailbox was a card and it was made to me. Somebody had taken time out of their day to send me a card to tell me, hey, I'm thinking of you. When I got that card, I immediately felt empowered. I felt strong, I felt focused, I was happy, and I just plain smiled. This is what our organization Send a Smile Today does. We provide the hope and the love and the support to other people going through cancer. Our mission is to let them know that they're never alone. Never alone from time of diagnosis, through their treatment, to survivorship. And we do this by mailing them uplifting cards in the mail on a regular basis for free. Because our organization is funded from people like you. We've got individuals, we've got groups, we've got service organizations. And what they do is they make handmade cards for us. Or they donate store-bought cards. They donate envelopes, they donate forever stamps, and they make monetary donations. That's how we do it. It just doesn't take one person, it's not me, it's all of you, it's everybody. So what people do is they go to our website, it's called sendasmiletoday.org. So you can pass this on to your family members if you know somebody that's going through cancer that would like to receive cards from us. You go on our website and you can sign up to send them a card. And we will mail them cards as long as they want us to, as long as they need us to. We will be there. We just launched our card service July 1st, so this is very brand new. So far to date, we have received 700 handmade cards. We've received 30 store-bought cards. We've received 800 envelopes. We've received 1,200 forever stamps. We've raised $1,000. Wow. And another exciting thing that's going on, and actually today is a really big day for Send a Smile today, because we find out if we made it to the top 20 finalist round with the Livestrong Foundation. I don't know if it, many of you have heard of Livestrong Foundation, but they're a cancer support organization that helps people going through cancer. We entered into the competition several months ago, and we found out that we made it to the semi-finalist round. So exciting. It's so great because people at Livestrong believe in what we're doing. So today, we find out if we made it to the top 20, if we make it to the top 20, we will get mentoring and funding, and from there, it goes to the top five that will be flown out to Texas to go on a stage and to talk about what we do, to earn up to $140,000 worth of funding. It's absolutely amazing. So we find out today, so wish us luck. In our first month, so this is our, we have sent cards to 12 people going through cancer. And these people are, they're kids, they're teenagers, they're adults, and they're for every kind of cancer. It's not just one specific cancer, it's any kind of cancer, any person. So today, what you guys are gonna do is you are gonna provide the hope. You are gonna provide the love and you are gonna provide the support to other people. 
And you guys have already done this because I know that you brought forever stamps with you and I greatly appreciate that because every single one of you brought stamps and that will go to helping many, many people. But the next thing you're going to do this morning is you're going to break out into small groups and you're going to go sit at the tables and you're going to put some handmade cards together. And you're going to write personal messages on the card. Jackie's done a great job already. She's already got the stuff together and organized. But each of you will get to pick a message to write on the card. And you also need to sign your name to the card because people need to know who did the card come from. And when you guys write your message on the card, just try to stay away from get well soon or feel better soon because some people might not feel better soon. So we don't want to say those words. We, we want to provide encouragement and provide them cheerful and happy thoughts. And please also refrain from putting any religious messages on there only because we don't know what the religious beliefs are of the people that are going to be receiving the cards. That's the only reason. When you make the cards today, think of somebody that you're really close to. Put your heart and your soul into making the card. Pretend you're making the card for somebody close to you. Put that much into it. Your cards are really, they're going to be loved by so many people that receive them that when people are having such a dark day, your card will brighten their day so much. Now Jackie, as part of this, has worked really hard on putting together a video for all of us to watch. But before we watch the video, I was just wondering if any of you guys have any questions for me, either about me personally or about Send a Smile today. Um, so I'd like to open it up for any questions that any of you might have. Yeah, we send them anywhere in the United States. We have we sent twelve cards this month to twelve people. Just don't even, like, you don't have to say who they're to. You can just, um, and Jackie's going to go, are you going to go into more details about exactly? Huh? When we're in the small groups, we can talk more about it. But, yeah, just basically do them gender neutral. Um, some, if you want to, if some of them look more for a lady or a man, when, on our website, when people sign people up, they check the box whether or not it's for a male or female. And at that point, I look at all the cards we have, and I'll, I pull out cards that I think are for, that are for a male versus female. And if I know ahead of time that it's for a child, I try to find something that a, a child would like to. Yes. Can you give us a good example of things to say for an actual card that's been written? That's going to have to later. Okay, yeah. They said that that will happen um, when we break out into small groups. And there'll be a list on the table of all the things. There's like 12 phrases to choose from, basically sending you a smile today, or we're thinking of you. Very basic, but it'll be on the table for you guys to all see. Thank you. Sure. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and turn it over to the video. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate your listening. <laughs> 